Hey everyone, I'm Levi Polzin at Levi Warner on Instagram. This is Under the Surface. Uh, today we're going to be talking about this tattoo. We're going to break it down, dissect it, see why it works. Um, in my series of why does this tattoo work, um, we're going to go through kind of the shapes and the colors and everything of why I think it is a classic tattoo that we all kind of remember. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I'm taking this tattoo from Adrian Lee, um, taken out of this full coverage New School Collective book. Um, I think it was released kind of like in mid, late 2000s, probably like somewhere around like 2005 to 2007. I qu can't quite remember. Um, but I'm taking this back piece that Adrian did. Um, and kind of critiquing it. I remember it being as such like an important tattoo um, in my history personally, um, and not and kind of the history of tattooing and modern tattooing at least, um, and the generation of that I grew up on. Um, I think we all saw this back piece and we're just like, this thing is super cool, and it changed things in a lot of people's minds. Um, so let's get into just a couple things. Let's trace out the body here once again so we can really see some of the stuff that he's utilizing here. And I really like to do that just so I can see uh, a defined area of the back that we're kind of looking at here. I kind of messed, I give this guy more of a love handle here than he really has. There we go, that's better. Um, so I think probably the first thing that you see other, okay, I feel like there's three main things that you're gonna see. Um, one is the color. I mean, it's all monochromatic for the most part. Like it's all this ready, orange a little bit of yellow in there um and then the second is the sizing um the face is huge and other than like kind of like hanya backs um we really didn't see this other than that the shige one which i went through um which i feel like was around the same time um and i feel like a lot of these ideas were kind of like out there and people were really starting to experiment with them so yeah, size, color, and then I think the dynamics uh, that also play into um, the size as well. Um, let's break it down into a center line here so we can see that. And then it kind of has three sections here. And we're going to just take a look at those. Um, so as you can see, it's a little higher up on the back. Uh, almost it's in two sections really it's kind of just more split into two really if we really look at it it's kind of above this kind of waistline and then below it um, I look at it three because I, I view this kind of second hand up here as a, as a dividing line as well because it's really bringing another interest point above those shoulders so to me I kind of I divide it into three sections as I usually do, um, but really if we're looking at it, it's almost divided into two. Um, let's take that center line away. Well, you know, let's put that center line again. I really will say a lot of it is pretty evenly weighed. Um, I think my only thing is I maybe would have liked to see this hand pulled over a little bit, um, maybe played a little bit more over here, because um, when it goes across the entire lower back here, I feel like it loses some of the dynamics and I feel like it loses some of the the nature of like, if you really could have had like a hand here and a hand there, I feel like that would have really um, brought kind of mirroring from top and bottom from side to side a little bit more. Um, it's not to say that it, it's not good or bad. I mean, it, it's amazing that hand is utterly beautiful the way it's rendered um i just probably now or maybe even probably adrian him doing it now would more than likely put that hand a little bit 
over just to to even things out from side to side i would bet uh, but once again not a bad choice in the end uh it's just kind of like retrospectively you look back at things sometimes and you see it and you're like oh yeah i probably would have done that um, but it's still a really great um flow and movement um to me the colors and the monochromatic nature of the tattoo really lended itself to something new at the time I feel like you really weren't seeing a lot of monochromatic tattoos. You definitely weren't seeing a lot of monochromatic tattoos on this scale. Um, I mean, this this guy's back is pretty much all red. I mean, I understand there's kind of some orange and a little bit of yellow in there. And obviously black. But it's basically all red. Um, and that is a really kind of crazy thing to do and I feel like we saw it more like as the 2000s kind of went on um, but at the time when this came out I mean it was it was huge and it was kind of really kind of mind-blowing um, I also think the lighting and the dynamics of everything really played off a lot of things that Paul Booth and Philip Liu um, were playing with in the late 90s to early early 2000s like I'd say like 2001 to 2002 or 3 um, and it just kind of magnifies it. Like I would say that Adrian probably saw that stuff and was just inspired by it. But how does he convey that in his realm of what he's interested in at the moment? Um, so, yeah, I, I really think he's pushing ground. He's pushing ideas, um, not only with a lot of things. And one of them, which is the color scheme. Um there's a great flow and a great rhythm of the black. I love that he included all this black along here um, and underneath the face and behind this kind of shoulder here, all this black, because that's really what is allowing for the eye to keep moving through this piece. Um, without all that black, A, it anchors it onto the, the back, I feel like as well, um, and adds a lot of depth, but it, it also, that rhythm of here to here to here to here. Um, and even this line of the background is kind of cut across in the eyes. The eyes have that same depth and dark um, if you really look at it. So there's kind of three sections if we look at it in just the black. I feel like that's where he's kind of dividing this into three sections. But the main image is kind of divided into two. Um, but your three sections is more in the where he put the blacks. Um, and that kind of goes into a very traditional American approach of one third black. Um, and he really does have like one third black to one, I would say almost two thirds color. Um, there isn't much negative space. There's a little bit in the highlight points of the forehead, a couple of the fingers up here and the nose and the cheeks. But other than that, uh, there really isn't much, um, negative space or white or anything in this tattoo. Um, you know, and Adrian, as, as he kind of progressed, kind of involved a little bit more, I think he, he opened up some of this hair stuff later on to really lend itself better to, um, that open skin, that third of open, uh, in the tattoo. Um, uh, but at this moment when he's doing it, it's not quite there. Um, and this one kind of really plays off of that almost one third, two thirds, and the two thirds is really the color, but you're really getting that one third from the black. Um, I lo loved these hands when I first saw them. Uh, I'm a huge comic book nerd. I, I mean, I love comic books and it's kind of where a lot of my, um, initial inspiration for becoming an artist really came from. Um, and in that there's a lot of kind of Bernie Wrightson made these books of like dynamic figure, dynamic lighting, dynamic hands and dynamic figure. Maybe I already said that one. Um, and tattoo artists used them a lot, um, and I, I feel like especially in the, from like 2000 to 2005, we were using that Bernie Wrightson, or I'm sorry, Bernie Hogarth's dynamic hands like a motherfucker. We were using it left and right, and I feel like that is exactly, I don't think um, Adrian Lee uh, directly used a Bernie Wrightson um, reference. I think he used... Uh, this is all a photo reference. Um, 
I think of Nate Ben Wellos, but I'm not 100% positive on that. But I think it is. I think it's a photograph he took of um, Nate. Um, and so, but the way he did the kind of, um, if you can see in here, the way he created the knuckles and the sinew and the tissue underneath the skin of here is straight out of um, Bernie Hogarth's dynamic hands. Like, I mean, it might as well just literally be taken out of the book. Um, and if I can find it after the fact, I will, uh, I'll include it in, in a little piece at the end of the video or something. Um, but I might not have unpacked those books yet. Um, but that dynamic nature of those hands and how big they are really just lent itself to just something that we had never really seen in tattooing, um, kind of up until this point. Um, and so that really works for me. That's kind of most of it, really. I mean, it's such a simple tattoo for how complex it kind of looks. I mean, it's really just a big face and two hands and some black and, you know, red. Um, and a little bit of hair. Uh, but really, at the time, this was such a, a pivotal tattoo. And I think so much of it uh, does come down to the color. You know, the color um, plays into... Um, the way that the um, that plays into the dynamics of the tattoo. The color really is kind of the key here. Um, there's kind of some cool things to note of, you know, the jaw kind of plays into the arm hand here a little bit flow, and which goes up and brings us into this piece. Let's do that a little bit better. So this goes into that, which goes into that, which goes in the top finger around here and then into our eyes at our focal point. And I showed you that in the um, Don Ed Hardy Panther back piece. Um, I was blanking on the, but it's the Fibonacci spiral. Um, and it really, it's sacred geometry that, that I know that, um, uh, Adrian is really into and he, he utilizes it way more in his work now um, and you see it very prevalent like in the outright like just outright he's just putting that sacred geometry in his tattoos but even if you look at the hairs a the hairs you could look at that as like um, if we look at these little hairs here that are kind of coming down they're just little mini Fibonacci spirals right they're little mini um, uh, versions of the flow of the larger part of this tattoo. Um, fractals, I think you can you could call them as well. Um, so a lot of this breaks down into fractals. You know, once again, he's got that here. Another more there. More here. And then down into here, he's got that. Over on the sides. And then there's kind of another big one here, like this kind of goes around and then circles right around into the butt with the open nature of it. Um, actually, you know, you could probably reverse that almost. It would probably almost start from here and then go down in here. Yeah, that looks a little bit more right. Let's take away some of these kind of hairs here so you can see that. Um, so it kind of comes from this side of the the knuckles of the hand goes across here to the arm, which leads into this, which then leads literally into those hairs on the bottom there. And so we've got two opposing um, fractal Fibonacci spirals, because um, this one goes the opposite direction of this one. Um, and this one leads you into interest points, and then this one leads you out of interest points. Um, so the, the focal point ends up being um, more just negative areas of where your eye can go to rest. Um, and that's really cool. I would really like to know um, if Adrian planned that that way or if it it's one of those things where you're just like, like when you're writing music or something like that and you know you've got a good rhythm when you're uh, writing a song, but you don't know that you're writing in like seven, six time with a, you know, like all these alternating um, chord structures that obviously mathematically fit together. Some of this stuff is just drawing that just works. Um, and some of us know it just intuitively that that's why it works. 
Um, I think Adrian now so is playing a lot more into those things where um, where he knows what he's doing. But I would say maybe at this time it just kind of came a little bit more naturally. It feels like a punk rock song. Like it works, but maybe he didn't exactly know why it all worked at the time. Um, but but kind of really cool. I thought it was really cool to just show the fact of that he's using all this fractal type stuff. Um, it's really the beginning of him kind of using a lot of that that stuff um, and what would become kind of a staple in his later work. Um, and what really I feel like that's why we're gravitating towards because this stuff is and these patterns repeat themselves in nature constantly. And so we're automatically drawn to them in the eye. Uh, I just noticed again, there's kind of another spiral. I'm going to, I'm going to hide all this stuff here because it's going to be a little hard to see, but I think I just noticed there's another spiral. If we go from the shoulder, we go from the shoulder into the finger, where does this kind of take us? Oh yeah. And then that takes us kind of into the mouth nose area there, or it could even take us down into the jaw yeah kind of the jaw mouth so you know he's utilizing that yet again into that um so there's multiple areas where there is fractal and um fibonacci spiral reference and um sacred geometry being used um kind of quick one another thank you for tuning in for this one uh remember to like and subscribe I'm trying to hit a thousand followers by the end of the month or I'm sorry, 1,000 subscribers. Um, I've also got prints and stuff available, which I'll, I'll do a little end cap on this. Um, if you can support, it's much appreciated and it helps me out and helps um, you know me keep making these videos. All right, till next time, guys. See you later.